In previous models, we have learned how to put a regression model to a data set. In case where we had one predictor variable, we had fitted a simple linear regression. And in case of a number of predictor variables, we learned how to put a multiple regression equation. Now sometimes during statistical analysis, it becomes necessary to compare two fitted regression models. In a previous model, we have learned how to fit a regression model using dummy variables. In this module, we will discuss the comparison of two fitted regression models using a dummy variable approach. We have learned how to fit regression model to a data report. We know how to fit a simple linear regression using one predictor variable and we have learned how to fit a multiple regression equation using multiple predictor variables. Now sometimes it is necessary for us to compare two fitted regression models. When we wish to compare two such regression models, one of the commonly used tests is the Chow test. But apart from using this test to compare two regression models, we can also use the dummy variable approach. In this module, we will discuss in detail and compare two regression models using the Chow test as well as using the dummy variable approach. And we will see how convenient it is when we use a dummy variable to compare two regression models instead of using a Chow test and fitting the regression model over and over again. So the use of dummy variable in comparing two regressions is quite convenient. The use of dummy variable makes it easier and there are less number of steps involved. And we will also later on list the important advantages of using a dummy variable approach. So let me start with an example of the regression of fitting personal savings on personal income for two data sets coming from two different periods. One is for the period right after the Second World War, which is between 1946 and 54. And the second data set comes from the second period, which is between 1955 and 63. In this study, personal savings is considered as the dependent variable Y and personal income is our independent variable denoted by X. So if we look at the two sets of data, we will see that the savings income regression relationship has gone through a change over the two periods of time. And we will fit two regression models to the two sets of data and compare to see if there is really a change in the regression relationship. But the first comparison will be performed using the Chow test. Now in order to reflect the change in our model, let us fit two separate nines for the two periods. So for the first period, which is between 1946 and 54, let the model be denoted by yt equals alpha 1 plus alpha 2 xt plus u 1 t for t equals 1 to n1, where n1 is the number of observations from the first period. And consider the second period, which is 1955 to 63, and let us consider this model as yt equals beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus u 2 t, where here q t equals 1, 2, all the way to n2, where n2 is the number of observations from the second period. Now the possible changes in structure of the regression can be due to the change in intercept, which is alpha 1 in the first case and beta 1 in the second, or it could be due to the change of slope, which is alpha 2 in the first case and beta 2 in the second or the change of both slope as well as intercept. So if indeed there are no changes then all the n1 and n2 data values could be pooled and we can fit one single linear regression model to the entire data set consisting of n1 plus n2 observations. And let us denote this model by yt equals lambda 1 plus lambda 2 xt plus ut, where in all of these cases ut is the error term in the model. But the question that we wish to answer here is how do we detect the structural change or more simply how do we compare these two regression lines and conclude whether they are the same or they are significantly different. 
So one popularly used test is the Chow test which I have mentioned earlier. Let us look at the steps involved in performing the Chow test to compare to regression marks. But before that, let me give you the two underlying assumptions made while performing the Chow test. The first assumption is that U1t follows normal 0 sigma square and U2t follows normal 0 sigma square where U1t and U2t are the error terms from the first and the second model. So here as you can see we assume that both the error terms are normally distributed with the same varying or standard deviation sigma. In other words the error terms are homoscedastic. The second assumption is that U1t and U2t are independently distributed. So with these assumptions made we can now perform the multi-state Chow test to compare two regression models. The first step in this test is we combine all the N1 and N1, N2 observations from the data sets and the homoscedasticity assumption needs to be satisfied for this reason. Because we are combining the two sets of data containing N1 and N2 observations and we wish to fit one common linear regression equation, we wish to make sure that the assumption of homoscedasticity is met. So using the combined N1 plus N2 observations, we fit the model yt equals lambda 1 plus lambda 2 xt plus ut to this data set. And after fitting the model, we obtain the residual sum of squares and let us denote it by S1. And the degrees of freedom corresponding to this residual sum of square would be N1 plus N2 minus K, where N1 plus N2 is the total number of observations and K is the number of parameters in the model. In the second step, we fit two separate regression lines to the two sets of data. The first set containing N1 observations, which is fitted using the first regression equation yt equals alpha 1 plus alpha 2 xt plus ut and second we fit a regression model to the n2 observations of the second data set using the model yt equals beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus ut and for each of these fitted models we obtain the residual sum of squares and for the two sum of residual sum of squares obtained from the two fitted models the corresponding degrees of freedom are N1 minus K and N2 minus K respectively, where K again stands for the number of parameters fitted in the model. So let us denote the two residual sum of squares obtained here as S2 and S3. And we obtain the combined residual sum of square as S4, which is the sum of S2 plus S3. In the third step, we compute S5 which is the difference between S1 and S4, where S1 is the residual sum of square that we obtained when we fitted a common linear regression to the N1 plus N2 observation. So in step 4, under the assumptions of Chow test, we have the test statistic for this test given by F equals S5 divided by K divided by S4 over N1 plus N2 minus 2K, where S5 is computed in step 3 and S4 is as we had computed in step 2. Now if this F test statistic is greater than the critical value F at level alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis that the two regression lines are the same. And the rejection of null hypothesis tells us that there is a structural change that has taken place between the data in the two periods. Now this is an elaborate process and involves the fitting of three separate regression equations, obtaining their parameter estimate and also obtaining the residual sum of squares from the fit of these three regression models. So in, instead of using this method, we will look at the dummy variable approach of comparing the two regression models which is much more convenient and does not involve the fitting of as many regression equations as in case of Chow test. To use the dummy variables, let us first pool all N1 and N2 observations together and then fit the following regression. The regression equation is in the form yi equals alpha 1 p 
plus alpha 2 d 1 plus beta 1 x i plus beta 2 d 1 x i plus u i where y i is the savings which is our dependent variable x i is the income which is our independent variable as defined before and in addition to these two variables we define here d 1 which takes the value 1 for period 1946 to 54 which is right after the second world war and it takes the value 0 for the period between 1955 and 63. Now to see the result of the use of d1 in the model let us look at the expected mean value of the response variable or the dependent variable yi given the variable xi. So when d equals 0, when d1 equals 0, which means for the second period, the expected value of yi given xi is alpha 1 plus beta 1 xi. And the expected value of yi given xi equals alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus beta 1 plus beta 2 xi when d equals 1, which is for period 1. So these two expected values of the response variable gives us the mean savings for period 2 and 1 respectively and in the above model alpha 2 represents the differential intercept and beta 2 is the differential slope coefficient for the two models. So as we can see here the inclusion of dummy variables changes the slope parameter by beta 2 and changes the intercept parameter by alpha 2 from one period to another. Now the use of dummy variable here gives us these two expected values of the response variable and it indicates by how much the slope coefficient differs from period 1 to period 2 and by how much the intercept coefficient differs from period 1 to period 2. So based on the fitted model, if we look at the empirical form of the model using the following data set, then our fitted model takes the following form y p hat equals minus 1.75 plus 1.48 d1 plus 0 0.15 x p minus 0 0.10 x p times d1 and here we have also presented the corresponding standard error for all of these regression estimates using the estimated values of the regression coefficient and their corresponding standard error, if we compute the t statistic for testing individually the regression coefficients involved, we will see that alpha 2 hat and beta 2 hat are both statistically significant, where alpha 2 hat and beta 2 hat were reflecting the structural change in the regression model which has taken place over the period of time. So since these two are statistically significant, we can conclude that there is a statistical difference between the two regression models. So the regression of the two periods are different. So we can write down here the model as yp hat equals minus 1.7502 plus 1.4839, which is alpha 1 hat plus alpha 2 hat plus 0 0.1504 minus 0 0.1034 which is beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat times xp which gives us negative 0 0.2663 plus 0 0.0470 xp and this is the regression model for the first period and yp hat equals negative 1.7502 plus 0 0.1504 xp for the second period and if the reader can fit the regression model and perform the chow test on the same data set they will see that they obtain the same two regression models for the two periods when separately when they are fitted separately and they can compare how the comparison using a dummy variable approach as well as using a chow test gives us the ultimate same result now that we have fitted the regression model and tested and compared two regression models using the two approach, let us list the advantages of using the dummy variable. Although we have seen that the ultimate result is the same from using both the Chow test approach and the dummy variable approach, there are some merits 
for the dummy variable approach and they are one obvious advantage is that we have seen in our examples the fact that we have to fit only one regression equation in case of dummy variable approach whereas we fit three separate regression equations and estimate their corresponding parameters and obtain the residual sum of squares from three separate regression models in case of tau test. Also, the second advantage is that the single regression in case of dummy variable is useful in testing a variety of hypotheses. As I've mentioned before, the structural change in the two linear regression model could be due to the change in the intercept parameter or the slope parameter or both of them. In case of use of dummy variable approach, this single model will help us test whether alpha 2 is significant and beta 2 is not, whether alpha 2 is not significant and beta 2 is significant or whether both of them are significant at the same time or both of them are insignificant at the same time. And we can draw this conclusion by separately testing these regression coefficients. And this cannot be performed in case of Chow test. And the third advantage of using a dummy variable approach over the Chow test is that the Chow test does not specify which coefficient, whether the intercept or the slope is different. It just tells us whether there is a structural difference between the two regression models or not. However, the dummy variable has an advantage as it tells us whether the change in structure of the regression model is due to the slope or due to the intercept. In this module, we have learned how to compare two fitted regression models using a dummy variable approach and the method has also been illustrated. So we have seen how the use of dummy variable is very convenient when trying to compare two regression models. We can also extend it to the comparison of more than two regression variables and we will look at those in a separate module. But in this module, what we highlight is the use of dummy variable and how convenient it is in order to compare two regression models.